Uh, so good morning. I'm Mark Despotakis. I'm the director of market development at Progressive Music located just outside of Pittsburgh. I'm here today with PMEA, the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association. Uh, just a little background for you. PMEA is a statewide nonprofit organization of over 4,500 members. The organization includes those engaged in music instruction at all levels, from preschool through college and university, retired educa educators, college students majoring in music education, as well as those in the music products industry. PMEA supports and serves music educators and music education students. We hope you've seen some of the music education students performing through the Capitol, not only today, but through the entire month of March. Now, March is designated as a month to celebrate many arts disciplines. One of those is music, of course, and thus this month is known as Music in Our Schools Month. So with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce Pennsylvania Representative Eddie Day Pashinsky, uh, himself a former music teacher, with a special, special resolution for Music in Our Schools Month. Thank you very much, Mark. It's great to be here with all of you. Brings back so many memories as I was once a former choral director and we had performance after performance during the holiday season and spring concerts. So I'm eager to hear all these kids sing today. And what a great job the Presidential Brass did. Give them another nice round of applause. Super. You know, we all, I'm sure we're all aware of the fact that the uh, budget issue has not been the best this year. We could use this music uh, on a daily basis, and I can tell you that March was a great month here at the Capitol because we had so many outstanding performers from uh, all over the state uh, presenting great uh, concerts here, both in this great, magnificent um, rotunda and also in our East Wing rotunda. And of course, this magnificent building you know, is a part of exactly what the arts are all about. Take a look at this. It's not only historic, it's artistic, it's something magnificent. Imagine created by, by mankind, womankind, can't leave you out. Built it, designed it, just magnificent. Just as magnificent as when we put together symbols of all different kinds and create magnificent music. So it's indeed a, a privilege for me not only to serve, but to be a part of this great um, festival, music in our, um, music in our, what a, <laughs> marches music in our schools month. Sorry about that. So each year um, we all have an opportunity to, to um, sponsor various pieces of legislation and resolutions and citations. So it was my honor today to sponsor this along with 75 of my colleagues here in the House of Representatives. And if, if you'll allow me, I'll read what it says. So it says, whereas the study of music is basic to a complete education, provides a competitive edge for successful educational reform, engages students in individual and group activities, develops creativity, teaches problem solving, develops critical and evaluation skills. Is that correct? Is that what music does for you? You've got to be more energetic here. You've got to sell yourself. Music, whereas music education helps students acquire skills in production and performance of music, as well as an understanding of history and culture. Whereas music educators in this Commonwealth are committed to maintaining and improving school music programs for all students, regardless of their socioeconomic status, or their abilities. And whereas each year, the National Association for Music Education designates March as Music in Our Schools Month, the time of the year when music education becomes the focus of our schools across the nation. Whereas, it is fitting and proper for the Commonwealth to recognize and to commend music educators in this Commonwealth for their concern and effort to enhance the quality of music education in schools there. Therefore, let it be resolved that the House of Represent Representatives designate the month of March 2016 as Music in Our Schools Month in Pennsylvania. At this time, I'd like to present this to, to Mark and Abby, 
Would you like to accept it or any of your um, officers? So on behalf of all the members of the House of Representatives, uh, it's my honor to present you with this citation recognizing music in our schools month. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Pashinsky. Uh, it's fantastic to have um, allies in the legislature, especially um, someone himself, a former music educator. So today, uh, music educators and students are visiting with legislators and their staff members to talk about the importance of music education programs and to address some specific policy issues. They're telling the important story of the value of music education, but also the way music education fits into the overall educational landscape. In addition, PMEA members and students are taking some policy asks to legislative offices as well. Allow me to briefly mention them now, some of which will be expanded on as we continue by some of our guests. First, we are pleased to see a budget for the current fiscal year that has been signed into law. However, we are troubled that it was over 260 days past due. While the budget signed into law just a week ago does provide more funding for schools in Pennsylvania, it leaves the door open for a new budget fight. It would simply not be fair for schools to have to live through another year of budget uncertainty. School administrators and teachers have spent the last year worried about keeping the doors open instead of worrying about what's really important, students. So we're asking for the General Assembly to get to work and pass a balanced 2016-2017 budget that addresses the structural deficit and restores more funding to public schools. It's crucial that new funding will be distributed in an equitable way that takes into account the wide variety of factors school districts face. We ask the General Assembly to enact a fair funding formula. It is simply not fair that students in a poor or rural area do not receive as much funding as other students. Not only is it not fair, it's inequitable. One recent study reported that Pennsylvania has the highest gap in the nation for funding of students from affluent areas in comparison to students from low-income districts. In fact, the study reports it at a 33% disparity. That is simply unacceptable. Last year, the Bipartisan Basic Education Funding Commission released a funding formula that PMEA asked the governor and General Assembly to enact. This formula goes a long way in addressing the needs and challenges faced by school districts. And finally, the Pennsylvania Department of Education has been without an arts education advisor after this position was removed from the 2011-2012 state budget. This position is vital to educators to help them navigate the ever-changing landscape of education. While other subject areas have maintained an advisor position, the arts have not. Restoring this position is crucial to assist music and arts educators teach our future, the children of this commonwealth. We see opportunities for this position to be funded through recently passed federal education legislation, and we urge the Pennsylvania Department of Education to review ways to restore this position. Even with the many challenges facing education, educators and students, there is much to be proud of and celebrate in Pennsylvania. Communities across the Commonwealth value music education and stand up and support it in their communities. Today, it's my great pleasure to announce that 63 school districts in Pennsylvania have been named as a 2016 best community for music education in the country by the NAM Foundation. Schools interested in this designation submitted extensive data on their programs, and all entries were reviewed by the Institute for Educational Research and Public Service in Lawrence, Kansas. You can pick up a copy of the list of those Pennsylvania districts uh, at the PMEA information table. We congratulate these districts for this distinct award. But as we all know, there are many school districts that need financial and other resources to maintain and grow their music programs. PMEA is here to assist those school districts, but also to assist members of the legislator, the, general, the governor's office, and the Department of Education in making policy decisions that will help to fairly and adequately equip school districts to offer their students high quality music and arts programs taught by certified music and arts teachers. Now PMEA does work with students, educators, and school administrators to ensure a quality education that includes music for all children. 
And right now, it's my great pleasure to welcome one of those administrators here. Richard Snizak is the superintendent of the Parkland School District and, most importantly uh, for us today, has been named this year's PMEA Outstanding Superintendent. Good morning. I wish to begin by thanking the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association and the music staff of the Parkland School District for their role in leading to my selection as the 2016 Outstanding Superintendent Award in recognition of support for music education in our schools. In the Parkland School District, music is part of the visual and performing arts and is one of our three pillars, the other two being academics and athletics, which together form the foundation of our comprehensive educational program where our primary purpose is to educate the whole child. Music education is extremely important and a vital component of our K-12 programming and a non-negotiable aspect of our curriculum. The benefits of music education in our schools is supported throughout a vast array of educational research. Research has found that learning music facilitates learning in other subject matter and enhances skills that children inevitably will use in other areas. Children who study music tend to have larger vocabularies and more advanced reading skills than their peers who do not participate in music. Children who study music are more likely to excel in all their studies, work better in teams, have enhanced critical thinking skills, stay in school, and pursue further education. Schools with music programs have higher graduation rates and attendance rates in comparisons to schools without music programs. Regardless of socioeconomic status or school district, third grade students who participate in high quality music programs score higher on reading and spelling tests than their non-musical peers. There are many intrinsic benefits to music education, which include being disciplined, learning a skill, being part of a group, managing performance, and overcoming adversity. Music enhances the process of learning and nurtures motivates and includes active engagement, discipline and sustained attention, persistence and risk-taking. Students who study music can learn and think creatively. Investing in creative education will prepare our students for the 21st century workforce, which promotes problem solving and thinking outside the box and realizing there may be more than one right answer. For all these reasons and many more, Please continue to advocate for music education in all our schools. Thank you. It's, it's so valuable to hear words like that coming from uh, school administrators. We know uh, what pressure administrators are under um, on so many levels, so it is, it's so important to hear those words about the arts. Thank you so much. Uh, so we know that music teachers make a difference. Uh, and I think it's pretty evident when you'll meet this next person uh, how true that is. Um, we're so proud to call the 2015 Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year one of our own. Mari Cooper teaches in the Fox Chapel School District and was named the 2015 Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year. It's a testament to the value of music to the education of well-rounded students. Mari? Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. It is an honor to be asked to speak in this hallowed building about the importance of music and education. As the 2015 Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year, I have been fortunate to observe many wonderful teachers in action. I can assure you that caring, knowledgeable, and gifted teachers greet students every day in the classrooms across this commonwealth. My journey as Teacher of the Year began when my student, Eli, introduced me. He recounted a story about an email that I had sent when his father died. I was unable to attend the funeral because my own father was very ill. Eli had never told me that he received the email. It was not until the Teacher of the Year ceremony that I realized how important my words had been to him. For music teachers, these relationships are at the center of all that we do. 
We are tasked with creating ensembles in unity while simultaneously recognizing and uplifting individual voices. This is why we teach. And this is why, in particular, we teach music. The sanctity of these relationships characterizes our classrooms. In one of the essays for Teacher of the Year, I wrote, quote, one of my favorite parts of the day is when the bell rings and the last student enters my classroom, closing the door behind him. In that moment, the outside world with all of its noisy demands is put on hold. My classroom becomes a shared sanctuary for my students and for me. The truth is, most teachers feel this way. In music classrooms, as in all classrooms across Pennsylvania, we close our doors and allow magic, and sometimes catastrophe, to happen. We teach literacy through reading musical patterns, critical thinking through analyzing problems and devising numerous routes to solving them, and discipline through repetition of difficult passage words. And we never ever forget creativity. Our students improvise or, comp or compose new musical ideas or recreate gra great masterworks with a fresh lens of expression. We teach our students the skills for the 21st century and for a global economy. And generally, we do this contentedly behind closed doors. Throughout this past year, the door to my classroom has rarely been closed, and more frequently, it revolves. I decided that, for better or for worse, and some of my dear students are here and they can attest to this, I was going to take my students on the ride of Teacher of the Year with me. They are now adept at speaking to reporters. My door revolves every time I share my experiences with my students. They understand educational policy, and they are concerned about issues of equity, sending 12 boxes of school supplies to an impoverished elementary school in Louisiana. However, most recently, my students set the revolving door in motion. They won a visit from the internationally renowned Miro String Quartet by creating a 30-second video about the importance of music in education. The revolving door has become so critical to me and to their learning. However, I have to admit that as arguments over education have boiled across the state, I have wanted to firmly close my door and turn the lock. We are at a crossroads in education in Pennsylvania, but I believe that our leaders, while not agreeing necessarily on a path, are all deeply committed to the education of every child in this commonwealth. After all, built into the idea of a commonwealth, a society where people ought to work together for the general good is understanding that we are all responsible for the welfare of our neighbors and of their children. Everyone has sat in a classroom. Everyone has had a good teacher. And everyone has had a bad teacher. But not everybody has sat in a classroom recently. Not everybody has followed a teacher through an entire day or even half a day of his or her schedule. Not everybody has sat in different school settings. And not everybody has experienced a rehearsal of an orchestra, a choir, or a band. If we are to change the nature of the conversation in this hallowed building, then we, the teachers, must throw open our doors and invite our leaders into our classrooms. So let me be the first. Senator Velakovich, Representative Costa, Representative DeLuca, Representative Dermody, and Representative English, I invite you to spend a morning or afternoon at the Fox Chapel Area High School Music Department. My students will be hand delivering invitations to your offices later today. Our doors are always open to you. For the greatest lesson that I ever learned, I didn't learn as Teacher of the Year. The greatest lesson I learned, I learned in my sixth grade general music class. Let there be peace on earth 
and let it begin with me. I thank you very much for having me speak and encourage you to throw open your doors, invite people into your classrooms, and let your music change the conversation in this amazing Commonwealth. Talk about inspiring. Uh, it has been amazing to watch Mari this last year as, as she's gone through this Teacher of the Year uh, recognition. Um, to, to be continually re-inspired by her uh, following the journey. So we, we appreciate her being here and we are so proud to have uh, a PMEA member as a Teacher of the Year. Okay, so you've heard from the adults here. I think it's time to hear from someone that we're re really here to celebrate, a music education student. So please help me in welcoming Abby Garrigan, a student at Salisbury High School, who uh, will be actually part of the group performing after the press conference. Abby? Good morning. Aristotle once said, quote, music has the power of producing a certain effect on the moral character of the soul. And if it has the power to do this, it is clear that the young must be directed to music and must be educated in it." End quote. Music is my safe haven. Music is for the uncertain times in my life, but also for the times of celebration, joy, and triumph in the good. The ability to create an art with a real and genuine impact on my life is what I love most about music. Music has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember whether it be singing in my church or in the theater, playing the piano or guitar, or the involvement in my school's chorus and band, music has always been there for me. My love for music started when I was very young. I loved to sing, dance, and play music. When I was in elementary school, music was my favorite class. We only had music once a week, so I would always look forward to it each week. I remember being so excited for all my chorus and band concerts. As I moved on to middle school, I still participated in chorus and band, and I enjoyed every moment of it. But it wasn't until high school when music became an even bigger part of my life. In high school, many music classes were offered, so I made sure to take advantage of it. While in high school, I have taken multiple music classes, including music production, world drumming, advanced keyboarding, band, and chorus. Chorus has definitely been my favorite class, because the atmosphere of being in a room full of people who share the same joy as me always brightens up my day. While I was younger, I was involved in a, in a variety of activities, including sports. My freshman and sophomore years were very crazy because I was trying to balance my schoolwork, sports, and music. Many times I would have to choose between either going to sports practice or music rehearsal. But deep down, music rehearsal was where I always wanted to be. So in my junior and senior year, I decided to follow my passion of music and the arts. Music education has been so important to me because it has shaped me into the person I am today. And every day, I have something to look forward to when I come to school. Plato once stated, I would teach children music, physics, and philosophy, but most importantly, music, for in the patterns of music and all the arts are the keys of learning, end quote. Next year, I will be going on to college to study musical theater. If music weren't in my life, who knows where I would be, what I would do, or where I would go. There is music for every aspect in life. So whether it is there to comfort you in times of sorrow, or celebrate with you during times of joy, or just singing in your car or around your house, music will always be there for you. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Uh, that was fantastic. That really speaks to why we're here, what, what music does for students, and, and not only what it just does for you as a human, um, but, but you hear about it. music is what, maybe what motivates some people to come to school. Um, and then they can, you know, from that, pick up those other subject areas that are, of course, crucial. Uh, but there are just so many important things about why music is part of a full education. So again, um, thank you, Abby, for being here with us. 
PMEA has partnered with organizations across the state to ensure a quality education for all children. Now, one of those uh, organizations that we have partnered with uh, is the Education Policy and Leadership Center. And we're pleased to have Ron Cow from EPLC here with us today. Ron? Good morning. Thanks, Mark. There's a side of me that believes that uh, I probably should say nothing uh, because Mari and Abby said the most important stuff today. Uh, but there are other issues that we need to deal with uh, if we're going to make uh, their vision uh, and their good experiences uh, shared across the state uh, so that it affects all students. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here, uh, certainly all the members and the leadership of PMEA. Uh, we've been privileged to work along with you. But I especially want to thank the students who are here. Uh, it's important not only that uh, you perform here, because this is a great experience for you, uh, and it's a great experience for all of us to, uh, uh, to watch you and listen to you, uh, but it's important because you have the best stories to tell as well. Uh, not just in terms of them being entertaining, but you've got the most important messages to share with the people who live and work, in, not live, but work in this building. Sometimes they practically live here as well. Uh, whether you tell that story here in Harrisburg or you have an opportunity to tell it back home uh, to your elected officials, uh, those who are on your school boards uh, and certainly those who are members of the General Assembly. Uh, Mari talked about inviting some legislators to her classroom, uh, and I think that's what we all ought to be doing. Uh, you need to get lawmakers onto your turf uh, so that they see what this is really all about, uh, that they meet with students, they meet with teachers, uh, they meet with parents, they meet with other supporters, uh, but they see how this stuff is manifested uh, every day uh, in your classrooms and even in your extracurricular activities. Uh, I want to thank uh, PMEA and its members, its leadership for being a part of the coalition uh, that uh, was mentioned, the Pennsylvania Arts Education Network. Uh, this is an unprecedented coalition of more than 30 organizations now that have been working together uh, to promote a uh, arts education policy agenda uh, here in Harrisburg. Uh, and we could not have had the modest success that we've had over the last couple of years without PMEA's support uh, and active participation. Uh, and certainly uh, it would not be such a strong coalition without PMEA and its, its members. Uh, I want to emphasize that uh, there is great value in organizations working together. Uh, that's why this coalition is so important. Uh, the representative, I'm sure, can speak about the effect uh, when folks come to lawmakers with a common voice and a common message. Uh, but we also hope that it adds value to the good work of each of the participating organizations as well. Uh, I'm not going to try to reiterate the great value of uh, arts education and music education in particular uh, because uh, you all do it so well and you've already done it this morning. Uh, but what I do want to note uh, is that there is a great barrier uh, to, again, those experiences, those opportunities being shared uh, by students across the Commonwealth. Uh, we have some wonderful stories to tell. You have wonderful stories to tell. Uh, but this is not the story uh, that can be told uh, by almost 2 million students uh, across Pennsylvania's 500 school districts. Uh, and the greatest barrier uh, to that story being shared by all uh, is uh, or are some of the decisions that get made in this building. Uh, legislators are not here today, and I don't mean that as a criticism. Uh, they're doing stuff that they need to do back home. Uh, but what is important to note is in this building today, there is no sense of crisis. Uh, there are not folks running around uh, with any sense of urgency to do something about education funding in particular. Uh, and to some degree, that's because a budget got settled here during the last few days. Uh, but the fact is there is a crisis. It may not be felt in this building. Uh, but there's a crisis being felt across 500 school districts, uh, even more so uh, if it's a poorer school district uh, among the 500 that we have across the Commonwealth. And lawmakers need to recognize that. Uh, the state constitution doesn't require state lawmakers to do a whole lot, but it does require them. It gives them primary responsibility for the establishment and maintenance of a public education system. 
Uh, and in this era, this 21st century, uh, it's pretty well understood that that system needs to be fair uh, and it needs to provide adequate opportunity for students across 500 districts, no matter where they happen to live or no matter what the relative wealth of their home district might be. And so that's why the policy agenda, the ask, if you will, of uh, the organization, PMEA Today, uh, are so important. First, that there be a fair funding formula. And there's been a lot of progress made. We've got a formula that's been recommended by a commission of the General Assembly. Uh, the legislature has made some moves to embrace that. But it's important to remember that without money, a formula doesn't mean anything. Uh, you all know that's pretty elementary math. If you don't have a dollar figure in the formula, it doesn't matter. Uh, and right now, uh, there's a very small dollar figure in that formula. And so the legislature still needs to address that second item that's on the uh, policy agenda, and that is provide for sufficient support, provide for much more adequate funding. Uh, and then thirdly, they need to address, or the Department of Education really needs to address, with the support of the General Assembly, uh, the idea of reestablishing the fine arts advisor in the Department of Education. Uh, I should note that we are blessed that we have a music educator uh, who is serving as a consultant to the Department of Education. That's David Dietz, and uh, we should recognize David and thank him for his good work. Uh, because without David's good work, there would be no voice for arts education uh, at the table over there in the Department of Education. But the department needs to address it, and uh, Mark spoke earlier about some new opportunities that might be presented by the, uh, the new federal legislation. But we need to remind legislators of the following. Uh, we have the most unfair system of school funding and therefore school opportunity in the entire country. Uh, Senator Hughes last year said it's a national embarrassment, and he was right when he said that. It is a national embarrassment. It's the most unfair. And part of the reason is the state share ranks us in the bottom five or six on an annual basis. And the state appropriations per student have us below all of our contiguous states. And we are excessively dependent on property taxes and local wealth. And so if you live in a community that doesn't have a good property tax base, doesn't have a lot of wealth, there are far fewer opportunities for students. And as a result, we have this most unfair system in the entire country. We have this tremendous disparity. There is a new budget that was just adopted uh, and is going to or has been uh, moved into law now without the governor's signature. Uh, and there's a tendency in this building to celebrate the fact that there was a $200 million increase for basic education. That's important, it's a step forward, but let's put it in some context. School districts today, the superintendent who's been honored today still doesn't know here on the almost the last day of March how much money his district or any district will receive from the state for this current year. And meanwhile, school districts are required to pass budgets for next year without any clue as to what they might get from the state for the 16-17 year. So there's no good information yet, finally, for this year and no predictability for next year. And the system remains most inadequate and unfair. Keep in mind that the level of funding, even with this $200 million increase, still hasn't got us back to where school districts were in terms of state support, aside from pension money, way back in 2010. And the increase this year was not enough to cover the increased costs incurred by school districts for pensions alone. And so the net dollars available to students in most school districts around the state for real academic programs and support services is less this year than was the case a year before. And when we compare the state appropriations per student, Maryland spends more than $1,000 per year per student with state money than does Pennsylvania. Their appropriations are more than $1,000 per student per year greater than Pennsylvania. For us to get to Maryland's level of uh, state support per student, the state budget would have to be increased by $1.5 billion in terms of support for school districts. And West Virginia appropriates more than $1,000 per student per year than does the Pennsylvania legislature. For us to get to West Virginia's level, the state support for school districts in Pennsylvania would have to increase by more than $2 billion per year. So $200 million is something to celebrate, but there's a long way to go 
if we're serious about supporting public education in this state, including arts education and music education opportunities for all students. This is a story that you need to tell your lawmakers when you go back home and you have an opportunity to visit with them back in their district offices or when you get them to come into your own classrooms. Thanks very much for all you do. Thanks very much for your support for music education across the Commonwealth. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Ron's been such an important voice uh, for education uh, and, and really for arts education. Uh, and we, we, we are so glad to work with him and uh, uh, appreciate the help that he provides to us as well. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about some federal legislation. Uh, just a few months ago, a new piece of federal legislation was passed that got rid of what we came to know as No Child Left Behind. The Every Student Succeeds Act opens a variety of new possibilities for states and school districts to decide how education happens in their communities. With us today from the National Association for Music Education uh, to discuss this new federal legislation is Ronnie Lau, Legislative Policy Advisor. Hello, everybody, and I just wanted to thank Mark and the rest of the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association for having me here today. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Ronnie Lau. I am the Legislative Policy Advisor at the National Association for Music Education. So as you all may know, uh, from what Mark just said, Congress recently passed the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, or ESSA, uh, which is not only a momentous uh, win for education in general for policy, but for music education as a whole. Uh, since early 2015, NAFME has been deeply involved with the process of this legislation's passage. Um, we've participated in various education coalitions and participated in also high-level stakeholder meetings with members in Congress and their staff in order to get this legislation passed. Um, we have to really thank our music advocates during this whole process, including for their work, uh, our members in Pennsylvania, uh, for really doing all the grassroots work that we need to get this done. Um, in earlier around March and April of the spring season, we sent over 10,000 letters to Congress advocating for music education's importance within this legislation, which successfully made music, music education as part of a well-rounded education, um, which is its own unique, separate, and standalone listing within ESSA. Music individual listing, as part of a well-rounded education, provides increased opportunities for the access to music education for all students, uh, regardless of their circumstances or their history. What we see now is that each time a well-rounded education is now mentioned throughout the bill, um, these provisions may now apply to music education, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, this varies from different, uh, different titles throughout the bill, from Title I funding, which we now have gained more flexibility to support those students and target those who are in most need, uh, we have Title II professional development for our music educators now, and we have Title IV, which is a brand new pot of funding now for music education and music educators, uh, which has never been uh, accessed by music education prior to this well-rounded listing. NAFME has been uh, deeply involved with the implementation process now that ESSA has been passed uh, to ensure ESSA has been properly imp implemented in states like Pennsylvania, and we continue to work closely with stakeholders and the Federal Department of Education and State Departments of Education to this day to ensure that this bill is properly introduced and maximizes its effectiveness for music education. On the legislative side, we continue to really work with federal policymakers and ensure that ESSA is appropriately funded within its first year to ensure that its new funding opportunities benefit the most for all students that need, in need of music education. Although our work continues in federal level, um, the state implementation, there's much you can do really as music educators. Because of ESSA, music will now have a seat at the table with our federal policy stakeholders and locally with your school boards. Our educators now have no better time to assist their local school boards and administration to educate them on this important issue and important new law to talk about the opportunities and the different funding opportunities that now is provided for ESSA because of a well rounded education. We highly suggest all music educators and advocates take a look at our Everything ESSA page on the NAFB.org website, uh, where you can find different roots, resources, toolkits, and implementation guides to help you understand the new law. So from NAFME, we really thank PMEA for continuing the good fight here today, and we're all really in this together advocating for great music educators and our students across the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, it's so important to uh, have that, that federal uh, perspective, too, especially, uh, you know, as Ronnie said, with the, the, the new opportunities that ESSA opens up for us. 
Um, so in Pennsylvania, we're, we're very lucky to have one of our own serving at the national music education level. Scott Sheehan teaches in the Hol Hollidaysburg Area School District, but is also the president of the National Association for Music Education Eastern Division. We'd like to welcome them up here for a few remarks. Scott. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. I would like to start with a quote by John Sykes, who is a former president of VH1. In every successful business, there is one budget line that never gets cut. It's called product development, and it's the key to any company's future growth. Music education is critical to the product development of this nation's most important resource, our children. And I don't think that he's talking about the children that are already performing in our band choirs. And or I shouldn't say, let me rephrase that. He's not talking about just the children who are in our very uh, talented bands, choirs, orchestras, jazz programs. I think that he's also talking about the students that maybe love rock music and want to perform in a garage band someday or just want to jam out with their friends. I think he's also talking about students with special needs and the impact that music can have in their lives. I also think he's talking about students and children across the, our, our commonwealth as well as the country who simply just can't afford music. I think that we do have a true disparity and we are in crisis, just to reiterate some of the comments that we've heard before uh, this morning. I think that although we have had five years of wonderful advocacy days here, our work is just beginning. And although it feels like we've been doing this a long time here in Harrisburg, as well as Washington, D.C., our work is really just beginning. The uh, work that the National Association for Music Education ha has done to help the, the passage and the uh, enumeration of music in the new ESSA law is great, but we need to continue to work together, PMEA and NAFME. We need to continue to work, to work together as the public sector and the private sector. We need to have Democrats and Republicans work together. And we truly need to have educators and citizens across our commonwealth work together for our most important resource, and that is our children. Another quote that I often like to share is by the great John F. Kennedy. I look forward to an America which will reward achievements in the arts as we reward achievement in business or statecraft. I look forward to an America which will steadily raise the standards of artistic accomplishment and which will steadily enlarge cultural opportunities for all our citizens. I look forward to an America which will not be afraid of grace and beauty. And I look forward to an America which commands respect through the world, not only for its strength, but for, but for its civilization as well. I believe that President Kennedy is referring to how the power of music and the arts can influence our society for all the children, not just the top 10 or 20 percent or students with privilege. Music is how we know who we are. I had the privilege last two weeks ago to talk with Howard Gardner, whose theory of multiple intelligences cites music as one of the ways that people have the capacity to solve problems or to fashion products that have value or worth. Music is a way in which we identify ourselves. The music on our iPods, or maybe for some of us our CD collections, or maybe for some of us our record collections, is a clear descriptor of what we value in society. We show what we value by where we spend our time and our money. Today is our opportunity to show that music education is valued and adds to the society that President Kennedy looked forward to seeing and achieving. We need to make this a reality. Our work is just beginning. So I leave you with another quote, another favorite of mine by Albert Einstein. If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. So let us share all of the messages that were shared today with us so that tomorrow's scientists, engineers, attorneys, teachers, inventors continue to find their inspiration and joy of music in their hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. We thank you all for attending today and hope that you'll take the messages you heard to policymakers at the federal, state, and local levels. 
We must keep music and arts as part of a well-rounded education for all students. So to finish things up today, I'd like to introduce Dennis Emmert, PMEA's president. Dennis? Thank you, Mark. I would like to start by just, I have a, a long list of thank yous. First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. It's very important that we, we have a, a great turnout like this. Next, I would like to take the opportunity to thank Mark Despotakis for organizing today's activities. Mark is the chair of our Advocacy Council. Mark is doing an outstanding job for our organization. Please join me in thanking him for all the hard work that he does. Also, I'd like to thank all of our speakers, Representative Pashinsky, Mr. Sisnak, Ms. Cooper, Ms. Garrington, Mr. Cowell, Mr. Lau, and Mr. Sheehan for taking time to be with us today. Your words have been most inspiring. I would also like to thank Chuck Neidhart for arranging our performing groups today and throughout the month of May, or excuse me, the month of March. I can't think of a better way to celebrate music in our schools month than with music being performed by students of our own members. Also, a thank, I would like to personally thank the other members of the Presidential Brass for uh, joining uh, today and, and uh, playing the opening ceremony with me. PMEA believes that music and the arts effectively engage students in their creative, cultural, aesthetic, intellectual, social, physical, and emotional developments in the development of their identities as students and as citizens. They also develop, it helps develop students' skills critical to the 21st century learning for success in school and in their life and develop skills inter integral to the economy of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the United States. Please help us in seeing that this happens for every student in Pennsylvania. Thank you. At this time, I would like you to invite you to stick around for a performance by the Salisbury High School Choir under the direction of Rachel Reinecke. They'll be joining us here on, behind me in just a few moments. Again, thank you all for coming today. Thank you.